guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. This video is dedicated to those people who may need a little bit of help on their weight loss journey. This is not for people who are experienced with working out. I'm trying to help anyone who's just kind of maybe looking for a little bit of motivation just to share my secrets with you and let you know what helped me get through it. I am not a health professional, I'm not a personal trainer, nothing like that. I'm just a regular gal and I'm just sharing what's worked for me. So last year, probably around January, I started to want to change. I wanted to change my body. I am 5'11", and at the time I was 260 pounds, maybe 265. That was probably the heaviest I've ever been. Um, I hadn't weighed myself in a long time. There was a lot of things and circumstances that happened in my life that led me to actually dedicate my time and go to the gym, and that's something I will share with you. However, I just wanted to let you know what my starting point was. It was 265 and I was really out of shape. I was drinking pop all the time. Like I'm talking like sometimes I would have six or more cans of pop a day. Um, you know, just like McDonald's, junk food, fast food, and then zero exercise, zero. <laughs> so I made a few changes. I just kind of really slowly did everything and I'm going to introduce you to some of the supplements that I use and products that I use and I'm going to introduce them as I took them over time. So when I first first started exercising, I did it at home. I was so embarrassed. I didn't want to go to the gym. Honestly, I didn't really think I needed the gym. I'm like, I'm just going to do it from home. I kind of started to half-ass it at first. But then, you know, I had, like I said, a few different things that happened in my life and I just decided, you know what, I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to stick with it. So. First of all, let's talk about some of the reasons why, like what happened in my life and what made me, you know, so dedicated this time because I go to the gym almost every day. Like I go four or five, six times a week. I go for two hours. I really, really, really put in the work. I am 100% dedicated to myself and it's, you know, a combination of things that led me to having the strength to finally do that for myself at 34 years old. I was 33 when I started, I'll be 35 in August. And these last year, this last year has been the most transformational year of my life. And I've really taken the time to focus on myself and focus on you know, being the best version of myself. So personally, I didn't have any plastic surgery. I haven't had a gastric bypass or anything like that. I wasn't that overweight that I didn't think I could do it on my own. I knew I could do it on my own, however, I knew it wasn't going to be easy. I knew it wasn't going to be four weeks, like it wasn't going to be a get fit by summer thing. I set a goal and I set myself two years, okay? I knew that it was going to take me two years to do it and it was going to take hard work, but I set that goal. I said I want to be a perfect 10 by 2020 and my vision of a perfect 10. Like I know I was never going to be perfect, nobody's perfect, but just what I envisioned for my particular body by 2020. So I gave myself that time to really, you know, propel myself to where I needed to be. So I just want to make sure that if you are going on a fitness journey and you're starting where you have to lose weight or gain muscle, which I was trying to do both, just make sure you set long-term goals, you know. Don't try and set yourself up for a six-month thing. That's not how you're going to change your body. I basically took on the identity of a bodybuilder. That is who I am now. I drink a protein shake when I get home. <laughs> Got my protein shake. I am taking all the right supplements now, but that's not how I started. I just started baby steps. And over time, the more you learn, the more you know, and you will grow and grow and grow. Oh, look at who's a little poet. <laughs> so one thing that like really, really helped me um, stick with it. I was watching a Tony Robbins thing on Netflix and he was mentioning, he mentioned a quote by Bill Gates and he said, most people overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10. And that really stuck with me because that's so true. You know, like we all expect things to happen like right away, right away, no matter what it is, if it's love, if it's, you know, fitness, if it's money, anything like, but Things take time, you know? It's okay to be patient. And in the world we live in, we just want everything now. And if we don't get it, we go online and we find it and we make it work. But if it's not supposed to be, then why force things? So just, you know, that's the same with your body. Like you can't force your body to be something it's not. You can't compare yourself to Kim Kardashian because that isn't built in the gym. Yes, those people go to the gym to maintain their physique, 
but they have breast implants, they have booty implants, they have their nose done, they have Botox, all of these things you have to remember. So just make sure that you're setting appropriate goals, that you're not comparing yourself to an unattainable standard unless it's with surgery, and just make sure that you talk to yourself in an encouraging way. Honestly, how we talk to ourselves in our mind, that matters. You have to envision what you want to be. It's like a, it's like a vision board, like, a, you know, where you put up all your things you want to be and then you can make it happen, the law of attraction and whatnot. But it's so true. You have to envision it. You have to believe it with every fiber of your being and you have to know you can get it, you know, and that really applies to fitness. It's going to be hard. It's going to take dedication, but you can do it. Anyone can do it as long as you are an able-bodied, healthy human being. And that's the thing, I was 33 years old and I was completely able-bodied. I didn't have any health issues, I didn't have anything wrong with me mentally, physically. I was just choosing to not be active, I was choosing to be lazy. But I think part of life is to learn to love yourself and love others and I think part of that journey is actually taking care of our vessel for experience. You know, like we are here in this body, we choose to be here to experience the world. So why not just try and be your best version of yourself? You know, like it's about challenging yourself. It's about saying every day, I wanna be better. Like I wanna be the best version of myself. And there was nothing wrong with the old version of myself. Like when I was 265, I felt beautiful. And I think all different types of people are beautiful because what really makes us beautiful is our mind and our spirit, you know, but at that point when I really, really did love myself, I felt beautiful. I, I was taking photos. I was, you know, I'm a professional plus size model. But at that point I was like, you know what? I just want a change. I want to be better. And really it doesn't have to do with the way I look, even though I love looking physically better, I love feeling better. I feel more sharp, I feel more outgoing, I just feel 100% full of energy all the time, and I am proud of myself. That's a nice feeling. It feels really good to be proud of yourself and to have other people recognize the work that you put in. Like, it's just a good feeling, you know? So one of the major things that happened in my life that really catapulted this for me, and this isn't this isn't, you know, just with me. I have heard this many times from many a people, but it's a revenge body. You know, sometimes you go through something that is so traumatic in your life, like someone that has hurt you so much that you're just like, you know what? F that person, I'm gonna show them I am not all those things that they said I am and I'm gonna be better. So I do admit that that happened to me. I met someone and I was in love with him very much. And it was the first man I had been with since, well, I guess like second guy, but like the first guy was just, just a fart in the wind, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it was the first guy I really was in a relationship with since my baby daddy. And I fell hard. I fell like smack dab in love with him. And he manipulated me. He used me for money. He would put me down and say I was fat. Um, when I, we lived far away, I lived two hours from him. He didn't have a car or a license. I would always drive and go visit him. And then as soon as I came home, I would be getting texts saying I was a W-H-O-R-E, that I was sleeping with other people, that I'm texting my fans and doing like sexy DMs and like just all these things that just aren't me like at all. And then he would say, well, I know you're a big slut, so I'm just going to go screw the next petite little thing, you know, and it just really <laughs> broke me down. Like I love this guy so much. And he would say these things to me and then come back the next, you know, week, be like, I'm so sorry. Like, I was just upset. I love you so much. You're my best friend. And I really, I knew that I was in a bad place. I knew that I wasn't in a relationship where I should be. But I found myself, like, feeling like this woman he felt he could take advantage of, like, because I was fat. Like, and I even said that to him one time. I'm like, I feel like you're treating me like this, this fat girl you could just take advantage of. And I've never been treated like that by anyone in my entire life. I've never had someone treat me with such disrespect and say horrible things about me and say I wasn't loyal because I've just never met someone like that before. So it was really traumatic for me. And when we actually, like when I actually had the strength to like, be like no, like no more, like I don't want to see you again. I don't want to do anything. He was actually dating another girl at the same time and like still texting me and still contacting me. And I was just like, that's it, enough's enough. So like that really fueled me because when I was finally got the strength to shut him down, that's when I really got the strength to like build me up. Like I wasn't gonna let someone 
that I loved dearly hurt me and break me. And I remember thinking at the time, I was crying one time on my floor, like just sobbing because of something he had texted me. And I remember thinking like, why is this happening to me? Like, what did I do karma wise to bring this on? What is the lesson that is meant to be learned here? Because I don't get it. Like, why am I, why is this happening? Why is this person in my life? Because I do believe that we bring things into our lives for lessons. And at the time I was trying to see and understand why. And now I see, I, I get it. He was in my life to teach me how to be strong and to teach me that I deserve better than that. And like, as much as I wish I could learn that from a good person, I actually learned it from one of the worst. And un like, that's just unfortunately how it went down. But that really, really, really motivated me to kick ass and to do better. And you better believe he stops me on Insta like every day, still. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna like start talking about the supplements that I use. So when I first started, as I mentioned, I didn't use any sort of gastric bypass surgery. I didn't go on like a crazy crash diet or anything like that. I did watch what I eat. I tried to cut the pop out because, or soda pop, soda pop was such an addiction for me. I did just switch to like Coke Zero for a while and was just having like no sugar drinks and that really made a difference. But I knew I needed help. Like I knew I needed a kickstart, like in order for me to like get to the point where I was like, okay, Something's happening here. I know I needed this help and I didn't want to do surgery or anything like that. I went onto bodybuilding.com and I found one of their most popular weight loss supplements and I started taking that. So I started taking Lean Mode by EVL, Evolution Nutrition. I personally found that this is what helped kickstart my journey. Like this is what helped me. I took it for about six months and I noticed a drastic change. I stopped taking it for about six months However, I did just buy a new bottle and I plan to start taking it again. I actually have been taking it for the last two or three days just to kind of help me shed those extra pounds, just kind of kick it back into gear again because I feel I've been at a little bit of a plateau for the last few months or so. So not only am I switching up my workouts at the gym, I am introducing, reintroducing lean mode back into my diet. So I definitely, definitely say that this is what helped me, but it may not help work for you. I encourage you to do your own research. And if this isn't something that you're comfortable with, I completely understand. But this is personally what I used and I did feel a difference. So I wake up in the morning and I make my pre-workout and then I go straight to the gym. And while I'm at the gym, I have my BCAAs. So I find a pre-workout is really good for hitting it really hard at the gym. I like to use the Evolution Nutrition Energy Shred. This particular one is in Cherry Limeade. Pre-workout is just basically supporting focus, energy, and metabolism. I find when I use this brand, I can go hard at the gym. Like I can go like three hours and I'm feeling good and I still am energized later. So this is really good for a pre-workout, but just be mindful of the scoop size if you're a petite woman, you know, if pre-workouts can make you a little bit shaky and also make sure you're staying hydrated after you drink a product like this. And during my workouts, I use the same brand BCAA 5000. This is a furious grape flavor. I just find this kind of helps kick my workouts, keep me going. It says it is good for building lean muscle, boosting recovery, endurance, and strength. So this is just something I like to have at the gym. I did notice a difference when I didn't drink it for a while. I was just kind of feeling like meh at the gym. When I have this, it kind of helps keep me going. I find like if I'm drinking this and I'm drinking my pre-workout, I will stay committed at the gym. I will stay for two hours. I will stay for three hours. I will do my workout if I'm drinking these things. So after I go to the gym, you know, like I said, I hit it really hard. I do weights first. So actually the first thing I do is stretch and activate my booty muscles. You can Google how to do all this stuff online. Okay. I'm not a health professional or a trainer, so I'm not going to try and teach you how to train. That's something you need to learn how to do on your own or get a personal trainer. After that, I hit weights for approximately an hour and a half to two hours, depending on what I'm doing that day. I'll do an upper body day, I'll do legs. Some days I do full body days. When I first, first started, it was pretty much full body day all the time. Now I'm training a little bit differently because I've lost the initial weights. So now I'm really doing target muscle groups on different days. And then at the end of my workout, I do my cardio. I do, sometimes I'll do just 10 minutes of cardio. Sometimes I'll do 30, depending on, like I said, how I'm feeling. <laughs> It's always good to do your cardio at the end of your workout. If you're trying to get shredded and get that like really fit look, you want to save up your energy for your weightlifting. 
and then do your cardio at the end. You can Google that. <laughs> so when I get home from the gym, the first thing I do is mix up a protein shake. A protein shake. So this is Synthes 6. This is my particular favorite. I have tried several different flavors from Synthes 6, and I particularly like the chocolate cake better. It literally tastes like you are drinking a chocolate cake. This does not taste like whey. I have tried lots of different proteins and Synthes 6 has my heart. I love it so much. This is so, so, so good. So Synthes 6 products, basically it's a multifunctional ultra premium protein matrix. It's naturally occurring BCAAs and other essential and non-essential amino acids. It has zero milligrams of aspartame, MCTS, EFAS, and glutamine peptides. Basically, this just tastes like so good and you will see I love chocolate. Like I am a chocolate person, so this has my heart. I love it so much. <laughs> so I like to add to my protein shake collagen peptides. I will add a half a scoop to my protein shake. This collagen peptides here is from EVL. I particularly love this brand. I always get EVL everything for my supplements except my protein. I haven't tried um, EVL's protein yet. So collagen peptides supports healthy skin, hair, and nails. It also supports healthy joints and bones. It's grass-fed and pasture-raised. It's easy to mix and water-soluble, so I like to just put it in my protein shake and then good to go. I recently decided to add creatine to my protein shakes. This was a little, I was a little bit scared of creatine because I think creatine, I just think like bodybuilders. I just think of like The Rock and you know, stuff like that. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to look like that. But like at the end of the day, I am, building muscle. That is what I am doing. I am always trying to build my booty. I am like crazy building the booty every day. It's getting bigger. <laughs> so I decided, you know what? I need creatine. I really do. So I just purchased this from EVL from bodybuilding.com and I also add that to my protein shakes. So my protein shake has got the collagen peptides and then the EVL creatine. I've been taking this for about four days now and I already feel a difference. My muscle just feels like it's just, it just wants to like spasm all day. Like I'll be sitting there and just like my butt just just like boom, boom. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Hey booty, what's up? Like, okay, I feel you. I feel you. So I'm really liking this creatine so far and I guess we'll see, you know, at the end of a month if it's really made a drastic difference. So we will find out. So when it comes to eating and food and things like that, I didn't go on a drastic diet, like there's no keto. I mean, at first I thought, I'm gonna try keto, but really it's it just comes down to limiting what you eat, you know? If you're going to the gym and you're working hard as hard as I've suggested, and you're taking these supplements, you can eat whatever you want, like let's be real here, but you're not gonna like get skinny, you know? Like I feed myself as so I am comfortable. I don't ever wanna feel like I can't have something. If I wanna have ice cream, I'm having it. If I wanna have milk, I have it. If I wanna have bread, whatever, I will eat it because my body needs fuel when I work this hard. It's just really everything in moderation. And I know you've probably heard that a million times, but it's true, you know, you can have a cheat day, you can have a cheat meal if you're working out this hard and where you just really reward yourself and have whatever you want. But I personally think every day you should just eat whatever you want, you know, have a well-balanced diet, eat as if, you know, as if there isn't fast food available on every street corner. Like go to the grocery store, buy yourself vegetables, buy quinoa. Instead of like regular pasta, maybe try red lentil and quinoa pasta. It tastes exactly the same and it's good for you. You know, just like little changes. So instead of drinking pop, you know, with a whole bunch of sugar in it, maybe just try diet pop. Or instead of that, you could just try water, like sparkling water that's flavored naturally. There's a lot of carbonated waters if you have like an addiction to carbonated drinks, which I found I just really like the bubbles. So that's what I did. I still have Coke Zero once in a while. It's kind of like a treat for myself, but mostly in my fridge, I have like flavored water like Perrier, and then I've got like strawberry water and just like different things to have. So beverages is something you should really watch if you're trying to cut your calories. But just remember, feed yourself good, like cook nice yummy meals, Take the time for yourself and if you are going to have fast food just keep it limited like don't do it every day all day it's really not good for you and you're not going to get the goals that you want you know you have to take care of yourself and that comes down to what you put in your body it really does so in terms of like snacks and whatnot i still you know i still kind of munch out on my daughter's snacks sometimes like i'll have like toaster strudels and i'm because i just can't help it they're so delicious and i have such a sweet tooth but I do try and have healthy options in the house. So I have like carrots and yogurt dressing to eat. I'll have a bunch of fresh fruit, like strawberries, watermelon. 
In the cabinets, I'll have nuts, which are like, I like to get them from the bulk section. So I'll make my own kind of trail mix with dark chocolate covered almonds, regular almonds, and then walnuts. You know, basically just have more options at home. Like if you like chips, maybe just try to find a healthier chips. Like pop chips are so good. This just the sea salt pop chips are delicious and they're way better for you. So there's options that are out there. You just want to be mindful of it. You don't have to change your whole diet. You don't have to change your whole life. Do things slowly, do it in moderation. And just remember life should be enjoyable. We are here to experience the world, be it food, be it love, be it music, be it touch of another person, anything, everything you're supposed to enjoy. So don't ever eat a donut and then feel guilty about it because like, oh, I'm gonna pay for that later. Like, no, like just eat the donut, enjoy your life and then go to the gym later. Like it's really not rocket science. You need to be happy. If you're happy up here, your body is also happy. So just don't ever feel guilty if you eat something, but if you do need extra, help with that and that's something that like you know if food really is an issue for you then maybe you need to be a little bit more committed than I am I personally don't have a food addiction I feel I can be a little bit I feel like I can actually stick with what I need to stick with but if you're someone who does need a little bit help be careful when you're at the grocery store it really comes down to what you buy and it's okay to get out of the car and go in and buy stuff. You don't need to sit in your car, go through a drive through just because it's easy. Get out of the car, like go buy yourself food, guys, come on. So while we're on the topic of snacks, let's just talk about a couple of the things that I like. I got these protein bars from bodybuilding.com. I ate them earlier. <laughs> I actually recorded this whole video on another day, but I had just come home from the gym and I looked just like absolutely terrible. So I was like, okay, I cannot put that on YouTube. So. I actually ate my protein bars already. <laughs> they were delicious. The brownie, this this brownie was so, 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 so good. The cookies and cream one wasn't as good as the brownie, but I devoured this brownie. It tasted like just chocolate deliciousness. I want a million more of that brownie. Yes, please, thank you very much. So another thing to have as a food alternative, like let's say you like Nutella. I love Nutella. I only recently discovered Nutella like a year and a half ago and I was like, this like this is so good but it's really bad for you it really is like it's not good for you you know I have got the good peanut butter in my fridge like the Adams peanut butter with the chunky you know like if you're gonna get things like that just make sure you're getting the best make sure you're getting the ones that are all natural where sugar isn't the first ingredient so this is a grenade carb killer protein spread it's basically a chocolate hazelnut spread that I picked up from bodybuilding.com it's 80% less sugar than the leading um, chocolate spread, which I'm guessing is Nutella, 20% protein, it's gluten free, it's vegetarian safe. This is just a nice way to get a little bit of extra protein while kicking your sweet tooth at the same time. This stuff is absolutely delicious and I highly, highly recommend it. Also, I'm extremely happy that I opted for this because bodybuilding.com accidentally sent me six, like they sent me a flat. I ordered one and I got six. I'm not mad about that. Like, you know, I'm going to eat them. I also have protein pancakes, <laughs> protein pancakes. I whipped these up yesterday and oh my goodness. When I opened the lid, they didn't smell like anything. It was just like flour. But as soon as I started to put in the water and mix them up, it smelled like vanilla. They were really good. You guys, in terms of pancakes, I'm not really a pancake person. Like I'm not going to order pancakes when I go to a restaurant. Like maybe I'll have pancakes once a year. But I saw this on bodybuilding.com and I thought, you know what, let's just get them. If I want some, I got them. And these are so good. Like I'll be cooking up some waffles with this stuff like every day, you better believe. I love this stuff. So just remember when you're eating, when you're buying things, just maybe just choose something that has a little bit higher protein and a little bit less flour in it. So it's not necessarily about a diet. You know, you don't have to be on a diet, just have proper nutrition. That's how, to me, that's how it's gonna last. Like, I can't be on a diet for the rest of my life. That's not gonna happen. Like, keto for the rest of my life? I don't think so. Like, I like bread, thank you very much. So, maybe I'm just not gonna have bread every single night. Maybe I'm not gonna have, like, bread with butter and stuff right before I go to bed. You know, just being smart about your food choices, about when you eat, things like that matter. So just 
remember that, okay? I didn't have to change my whole life. I didn't have to change everything. I just made simple little changes over time and it's made a drastic, drastic change in my life. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about just little things. Like it's not gonna take you, a lot of people say it's gonna, you have to change your lifestyle. If you're, it's fitness is a lifestyle, fitness is a lifestyle. But what if you don't wanna change your lifestyle? Like what if you have a busy life and you can't do it? Like. Just remember, if you even do one little thing a day, you're changing your lifestyle. If you do something different, what I mean, every day, you're doing, you're changing your lifestyle. So you have to remember that and not be so hard on yourself and not take on the world when you think of change. You know, it's not about like, oh, I have to change every single thing that I am. It's like, no, you're just doing one different thing. Okay, you changed your lifestyle. Good job. You know, like, don't put so much pressure on yourself. I think people just... We, we expect everything to happen overnight, but at the same time, we're not like willing to put in like the effort for things. So it just, it doesn't make sense because like, we just want everything now, 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 but you know, just know that things take time and so will, so will your fitness journey. Your fitness journey is going to take time. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hoped it helped you a little bit, you know, like I'm not a professional, but like hopefully my frame of mind and where I was at and showing you that physically I have changed. You can too, if you're willing just to put in the work, put in the time, talk to yourself positively and know you can do it. You know, you really can. So thank you so much. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them all. Thank you so much for watching.